Hello, welcome everyone to Aussie Tech Heads episode 277. How are you all going this week? It's been a quite a busy week for me. I teamed up with Will on Tuesday night, modded the phone, but more about that later. Uh, we, which we might say good good afternoon, good evening, Will and Eric. Hello, boys. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Hey, guys. How are we? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. We've got Eric down there in the blue blue corner and Will up there in the red corner. Lucky, really. <laughs> all right. Now, Eric, just before the start corner. of the show... I beg your pardon? The communist corner and the capitalist <laughs> corner. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, just before, we st- just before we start the show, Eric said he had the world's funniest joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, set me up for the hospital pass. Well, it's not that funny. Okay. I'm not going to tell you now. I'll, I'll leave it to uh, what, I'll leave it for CTF. <laughs> well, what happens if I said it's the world's worst joke? All right, it's the world's worst yeah. joke. Went to the doctor and said, I'm worried about a few moles. He said, where are they? I said the Gold Coast. <laughs> oh, I don't cast aspersions on the where I live, please. <laughs> and what was the uh, the hashtag for that? Australia's what was Brisbane, jokes. Brisbane, jokes, yeah. Brisbane jokes. Brisbane jokes. Oh, Brisbane jokes. Turn it up. Turn it up. <laughs> no, yeah. no, Gold Coast is a great place when all you guys go away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's great when there's no one there. That's yeah, right. It's a fantastic place, except for the people. Well, you know, you can't all be it's like, like Byron. Byron's like that. Yeah, Byron's definitely like that. <laughs> Can't all be like bloody Sydney, can we? No. Well, that's true, isn't it? No. Okay. <laughs> <Lucky>. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yes, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, we can, we're going to go through some news stories tonight. We've got an iOS review. We've got uh, Audible uh, uh, pick from Eric once again. And a lot of, and some emails. Had a, had a flood of emails. So I've picked out some best ones this week, and we're going to try and answer some. Uh, some probably without notice to the boys. But uh, I'm sure they're easy enough for... for the tech heads to uh, get their wrap their minds around and uh, get cracking with it. Uh, don't forget the webpage, AussieTechHeads.com.au. You can log in live, watch live.thesecrethub.com.au. Oh no, live.thesecrethub.com. Sorry, live.AussieTechHeads.com.au. Now you can go onto the webpage now and watch us live, so you don't have to go to that live streaming rubbish. You just go straight to the webpage. It's all nice and set out, so there's no ads and all that sort of stuff, except when you first log on. So do that. Um, call in live Aussie Tech Heads through the Skype and audio only on the shoutcast at radio.thesecrethub.com so you can have a look at that and uh, yeah more, more ways to contact us paper.aussietechheads.com.au and don't forget the uh, we're here every week every Thursday night at around 7.30pm Queensland time if you want to know what time it is in your area just go to the front page of the home page of the Aussie Tech Head page and I've got some little uh, some little times in what in the in what times it's what time we're on in your zone, and also a UTC time just for those uh, who can't handle the Australian times. All right, well we better get uh, cracking and uh, yeah, let's get cracking. All right, what do we got going tonight? What anyone got any uh, news that's happened this week? Because I, I have, but uh, but anyone um, else? I've got some news. Would you like me to start on a an NBN story? Yes, please. Well. In a quiet little, they didn't even release this. Uh, issue, the the r- updated rollout schedule, NBN, dated 15 February 2012. Okay, right. I have looked at New South Wales. The next, this is what they're, 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 they they these are the areas they're starting in January 2012 in New South Wales. Okay, Armadale, which they re- they they're expanding that, so that's there. Right. Yep. Now, National seat, bribe. Okay, we know that. <laughs> they should have had another column. They should have had another column. What, what seat's <laughs> what, what it sitting seats? in? I'll tell you what it is. Blacktown. Liberal. They've started in Blacktown, oh, Labor seat. Oh, oh, but there's nothing next to Blacktown. What do you mean there's nothing next? In, in yeah, that's, no, that's, they're starting that this year. Oh, okay, right, sorry. Fibre serving. It's not, yeah, they're starting it in the next month, you know, and it's going to take, in 12 months it'll be finished. Right. Coffs Harbour, yep. Labor. Coromel, which is Wollongong, Labor. Dapto, Wollongong, Labor. Gosford, Labor. Homebush, Labor. Kiama, Labor. Lidcombe, Labor. Long Jetty, which is the Central Coast, Labor. Penrith, Labor. Richmond, Labor. Riberston, Labor. Sawtell, which is down south, Labor. Wollongong, Labor. Oh, you love it. <laughs> That's just a complete coincidence. I mean, there's nothing, oh, bullshit, there's nothing Will. about that at all. Bullshit. <laughs> Well, mate, maybe maybe their thing is that they've got to um, they've got to get them into the labour seats because I know that they probably haven't got a hope in hell after it uh, after they get well, kicked out. It's yeah, it's a vote, it's a vote buyer, obviously, but it's a but is it really? 
It's a money loser. This has got to be a commercial enterprise. It's got to be built to make money. Mm. Yeah, but it's, just... it's not. You tell me, that out in Blacktown, they're complaining about twenty nine ninety five a month. They're not going to sign up for fifty nine dollars a month. No, no, that's right. And if you, I think you can get it for a bit cheaper than that, but it's going to be as slow as all, all buggery. And in Wollongong, this was the, one of the highest rates of unemployment in the whole country is Wollongong. Mm. So who's going on the internet there? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit crazy. It's, it's oh, Look, the whole thing is just a, 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 pig, a pigsty. But, um, so go to NBN Co. on the website, people, and have a look. In, and it's every month they're releasing updated rollout schedules with maps. And I guarantee you, go and have a look at uh, Queensland, Glen. and I guarantee you that there are very little um, non-labour seats on that. Well, hang on, I'm going to go there right now. Let's have a look. Uh, where do you go? Getting, oh, look, they're on Twitter. <laughs> It'd be funny to just watch that Twitter stream. And can we just say good evening to Ozzy, who's, uh, who's been, I think he told me tonight he's, he's got his Optus fixed. Well, for now. Who's that, Ozzy? Yeah. For how long? Well, they came out today or something, so you'll probably be ringing them up tomorrow. Um, oh, where do we go? Getting connected. Is this where we go? Go to, um, it's on uh, coverage maps, rollout plan, our network rollout plan. Roll out. There yep. we go. Oh, here's Detailed Queensland. Detailed release dates, PDF, February 2012. Download a list of towns northern and que- download a list of towns northern territory in Queensland. I'll tell you, Queensland, I've got it here. Ascot, Aspley, Goodna, Townsville, Nudgee, Townsville City, and Toowoomba. That's it. Yeah, nowhere near here. But anyway. Ascot's in Brisbane. So it's Goodna. Goodna's just in... Oh, there you go. Goodna, yeah. Goodna's just down the road. Yeah, that's up near you, Will. So you might be getting it sooner than later. The reason they did Goodna, actually, was um, because when it all got flooded, they had to replace most of the infrastructure anyway. So they decided to do it. But if it wasn't for that, it wouldn't be going in. No. Yeah, exactly. So, so, yeah, so we'll move off the NBN because I've got something else to talk about. (laughs) And um, it's it's about uh, uh, I modded my phone through the week, Eric. I'm not sure if you were if you knew about that. Oh, can I go and get a drink? You're going to talk about Android, aren't you? <laughs> For a little bit, <laughs> but uh, it it was good. It it uh, went quite smooth. We videoed it and it's uh, we put it up on the on the Talkback Tech YouTube. Where's you that at, a Will? Funny definition of went quite smooth. <laughs> it did go quite smooth. Well, the video went smooth because I edited it. <laughs> the video out. looks like it did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what's your YouTube channel, Will, for Talkback Tech? Uh, the easiest way to do it is just to go to um, talkbacktech.com and just click on the the YouTube videos there. Okay, so you can do that. And look, at the YouTube video goes for about an hour. The first 20 minutes is probably just background uh, muttering and musings. And then the, the modding didn't take that long, actually. And look, it does go rather well. Look, there's my phone. It's all it's all um, done up with the new... Oh, that's an old picture, but... Um, Look, it, it seems to go, yeah. It seems to go quite well. It's a lot more snappier. It's a lot faster, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm happier with it. I'm a lot happier with it. But there is one question I want to ask you about, Will, and just to see if you do know the answer. And this, as I said before, it might be peculiar to the to the Samsung. Is that you know how I've got the two little um, the menu light, menu soft button, whatever they call them, and a mm-hmm. and a back button. Mm-hmm. Now, for some reason, when the phone goes into standby. Like you know, in the standby like that, they light yep. up when a message comes through, and they'll stay yep. lit up. Yep, that's telling you you've got a message. But I don't want them to light up because I have a it's sus- draining your battery. Yeah, it's a sneaky suspicion that it's draining the battery. That'll be virtually nothing. But you can turn that off. Just go into your messages and turn off notification. Um, leave the the audio but just turn off visual notifications yeah well, i did that to a few of the apps but I, obviously you just got to do it for all of them because, yeah that's um, app specific yeah right yeah i thought that might have been the answer so that's good so anyway but they, it went all right so go and have a look at that youtube video it's quite uh, interesting how it all, all works out and if you've got a samsung galaxy s the first one i9000 whatever it is that's for you to be honest if that's draining your battery you've got bigger problems yeah i probably have but, uh, LEDs don't. LEDs don't. Got a draw massive your problem so. when you bought the phone, mate. Yeah, well, well, look, DT's telling me I should go to the CM9, but uh, maybe, maybe soon, maybe soon. But uh, we'll we'll stick with this for now. But uh, look, look, I've got a couple of stories going around the traps. 
Uh, look, I went through the stories this week, and there's a lot of uh, Telstra stories and, and phone company stories, so hopefully uh, we're not going to get too bored with all that sort of stuff. But uh, one of the most interesting ones, well, you could call it most interesting, is Telstra uh, shifting their emails to Windows Live and hence will be stored overseas. Now, did anyone, uh, anyone else pick that one up through the Windows week? Windows Live, and that's all your Hotmail, right? Mm. Is that right? You mean the Hotmail that just got hacked? Yeah, that's, going. that's good. Yeah. So they'll be all hosted in Singapore, <laughs> say, and the US. So, um, so Microsoft will be hosting the service offshore and Telstra will uh, just be providing a mirror uh, of this data to the Australian community. Uh, so what happens is, the, uh, as I read the story, and I thought, okay, well, you know, what's so bad about that? But as the story went on, it, it was first revealed by this guy, Mark Vincent, who's a lawyer. Uh, he says, many cloud contracts subject data to the laws of the jurisdiction in which the data is stored rather than where the business is transacted. So, um, so then hence he goes on, he goes, things like Singaporean law enforcement offers wide range powers to gain access to any computer stored in Singaporean territory. And the same with the US. If Microsoft and Telstra stores Big Pond email data in the US, data centers, the data becomes subject to US law such as the Patriot Act, which allows U.S. law enforcement unbridled access to the U.S. hosted data without requiring a court order. So oh, that's all. That's all good. Yeah, oh, yeah it's all fantastic stuff. That's yeah. what happened to Mega Video. They accidentally had one server activate in the states, and they got brought down. It's, I mean, you host your content in your country; you're subject to that country's source. That's, I don't understand why they didn't figure that out. Yeah, so that's okay. But uh, look, look, I don't know where I probably stand on this. Like, obviously, my emails contain no sensitive data that I probably couldn't care less where they get stored. But uh, I suppose, did you have any concerns with that, Eric? Can you see any concerns with, say... Uh, yes and no. Yes and no, because I've, you know, I've got client confidentiality to consider when I'm for my work email, mm. and I'd hate for that to be um, accessible just because a law in a particular country says it can be. Um, so you'd feel whether or not that actually harms the client or not is a different story. So you you would feel safer with it being hosted here. Yeah, well, my email is hosted at my office. Oh right, yes, yes, of course, yeah, yep. Yeah. But so, there, I mean, there's not a lot. You know, a lot of people have you know hmm. have Gmail, uh, Gmail corporate sort of you know. So you have got your own domain, but it's hosted by Gmail, and who knows where they're hosting it? Well, usually the states, and so they're um, you know, the Patriot Act applies over there which means they can search and seize without um without a warrant yeah uh look i i suppose for big business if they're going to store their information in the cloud it could possibly be detrimental say in 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 times of uh, disagreement with maybe the host country uh yeah. you know and uh, then you know, like the fbi could just you know pop in and well, i reckon if you can get a cloud service that's based in switzerland then you're right Mm. But look, I can't see why. Why can't we host? Why can't Telstra host this in Australia? It's Are they cheaper. Ju- yeah, but that's that's just a bit silly, isn't it? Like we should be, yeah. we should be um, promoting these sort of things. We should be expanding our knowledge and expertise and all this sort of stuff. But anyway, that's that's the go. That's the go. It's going to Singapore. Now, um, now also with Telstra, I found this other one came up. Uh, the the competition watchdog decided to regulate the prices that they charge that Telstra charges its rivals for to resell their ADSL broadband. Now, what's been happening is the Telstra is forced to drop its wholesale prices from thirty dollars to twenty five dollars forty in metropolitan areas, and thirty seven dollars to eighty to thirty seven dollars to thirty dollars eighty in rural and regional Australia. So what that means is obviously, you know, little the little dudes, TPG and uh, the others, II Net and all the rest of them who do the ADSL, they all buy it from the Telstra because Telstra's got the infrastructure. So they buy it from Telstra and then on sell it. So Telstra has been uh, lowering their retail price uh, below, well, apparently well, this is how the story's been going, below uh, that of what the... the, on, the yeah, what they're on selling it to their competitors. That's right, so what they're on selling it to the II Net and TPG for. Yeah, definitely anti-competitive. Yeah, so um, so but what will happen is so they they Telstra's been forced to charge uh, less. The majority of existing players uh, will have to wait till July when current wholesale contracts uh, with Telstra expire, uh, and they've got to wait till then before they can pass on any savings. I wonder how many of them will pass on the savings. Though I know I think people like TPG generally will. Um, I, I have suspicions about Internode and IONet, 
passing mm. that on because they're notoriously expensive. So yeah. we'll wait and see. Yeah, so uh, also, meanwhile, uh, there was, oh, yet, as I said, yet another another story about uh, Telstra. But the, the, I, I picked this one up because it's just, uh, it seems a bit crazy. Uh, the This data roaming packs and all this sort of is this stuff. New, is these new plans? Yeah. Yeah, the new plans. So to stop people from who use data roaming, uh, from to stop them from inadvertently coming back with a $15,000 bill which apparently this is what's been happening, which has been contributing to a rather large bad debt bottom line from Telstra. So um, th- th- these new plans from Telstra is I'll put the, put the little graph up because you just go crazy over them. <laughs> the new plans are expected to minimise the bill shock, increasingly suffered by businesses and consumers, blah, blah, blah. Now you've got this data pack starting off at $29, uh, includes 9.8 meg of data. Whoopie do. And going up to eighteen hundred dollar data pack, uh, which will give you nine hundred and seventy six meg. Oh, call it call it a gig. Call it a gig, eighteen hundred dollars for a gig. Now, what I can't understand is why does don't these why are people going overseas and why are they roaming? Like a dollar eighty per megabyte. That's ridiculous. But why are they roaming? Because like you prepay, Eric, when you go overseas. I go overseas. I just bloody put a SIM card in the phone well, all the time. Why would you have to roam? Well, <laughs> business people generally roam because if they're always on the phone, um, there's that number is what everyone knows. Um, they can turn their data off. But, you know, even so the you rates... just forward are, the number. What's that? Yeah, but then you're paying international rates. But I don't you forward it through Skype or something like that. But then yeah. you've got data, I guess. Mate, how many business people do you know know how to do that shit? We're talking about normal people here. But I can't mm. understand why. Is it just because it's just, it's just the ignorance that they go, oh, I'll take my phone over, so he's got to connect roaming? And a lot of it, I think a lot of it is ignorance. Um, let's assume that half of the people that get bill shock are, are business people and the other <laughs> half are, are everyday consumers. I would say that the business people don't have the time and the company's paying for it anyway, so they don't they get not the rat's ass efficiency from big corporations. And the other half, the consumers are completely ignorant. Yeah, really a, lot, a lot of the time, though, it just doesn't get switched over. A friend of mine went overseas um, and they activated the data roaming. They activated it on the net and then they rung to confirm that it had been activated. And then when they got back from their holiday, they got a yeah $20,000 bill for data roaming. And I said, no, well, hang on. <laughs> Not only had I, did I activate it online, I rung up to confirm it. And he had the, uh, the confirmation email. Hmm. Um and they went, oh, yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah, I suppose we better reverse that. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But uh, which leads me into an email that I got through the week from Curtis over in Arlington in Texas. I guess TX. Is that Texas? I guess that yeah, must Texas. be Texas. So, <laughs> yee-hoo. So, very long time listeners of the show. I finally have a valid question to write into the show. Yeah. My wife and I continue coming to visit Australia for my 50th birthday, blah, blah, blah. I bring my 3G iPhone and my wife is bringing her 3GS iPhone to use, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're going to yep. jailbreak and unlock both phones before arriving. We are yep. between light and medium data and voice users. We'll spend most of our time in Sydney and the surrounding suburbs with one trip down to Perico uh, near Toowoomba State Forest for some four-wheel drive adventures. Oh, will. And... Now, to my question, what prepaid voice data SIM package would you recommend for us while we're visiting the area? Telstra. Uh, yeah, that's what I reckon. Mm. Telstra will? Yeah. yeah. Generally. Generally. Oh, and, oh, and, oh, and, uh, I'll get the plans up and, and paste them in. Emmy SIM isn't bad. They're pretty good as well. But I think Telstra for coverage. Telstra for coverage, yep. And um, you, yeah, I definitely Telstra for coverage. Yeah. Look, I reckon... Um, look. Yeah, look, the plans aren't too bad. I, I did send uh, Curtis a link for the of the prepaid Telstra stuff, and they, they didn't look too bad. And uh, look, so so if he brings his iPhone over, three GS and what did the wife had? Oh, three G. Just have to be careful. Well, how, long, how long is he here for? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Okay. If he got a forty dollar recharge, <laughs> that gives him five hundred bucks worth of calls and eight hundred megabytes of um data and that's that'll last him 30 days mm. yeah yeah so that's all right i'm just wondering though if the american 3g phones would have the same frequencies as our 3g yeah they do 850 they do okay yeah. cool 
And even... Well, the, uh, the iPhones do. I don't know about the Android phones, but the iPhones do. No, well, he's got the 3G and the 3GS, so that should be uh, yeah. should be cool. And he's a he's a Rabbitohs fan, so good on you, Curtis. Oh dear. <laughs> You can't you can't have it all all your own no, way. Yeah. Quite a lost cause there. <laughs> no, they might go all right actually. But he can't he can't yeah. get the he can't get the footy over in the US and I think Will, did you have a quick link for those sort of things? Uh not off the top of my head. There is there is a link you can go to to grab those. The, there's always people streaming for them. Yeah, it's just, just Google them. I think you'd probably be able to find yeah. them sooner or later. You, you, want, you want the Telstra link? There's a Telstra link there in the in the chat. In the Google chat. All right, let's have a look at this Telstra link here. We'll Vodafone get their act together. You might give them a try, but probably don't bother. If you want, if you want no. uh, def, you know, definite, then you'll be. I think Telstra is the way to go. Yeah, I don't. don't yeah. I wouldn't confuse the matter. Just go Telstra, uh, Curtis, and uh, uh, that'll see you right. That'll see you right for sure. Yeah. So you can do things like uh, wherever TV. They do online streaming for AFL and sporting events and things like that. So yeah, you can. Yeah. You just have to Google and you can find them. Good stuff. All right. Now, yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, um, so sticking with, have I got any more Telstra stories? Jeez, um, I did that one, I did that one. Oh, I've got a Vodafone. Got a Vodafone story. Yeah, we might as well do the Vodafone story. Did you have that one, Eric? No. Okay, I'll put that one. That's all yours, mate. Will used, to be, you, <laughs> Will used to be with Vodafone? Uh, well, I was with three. Oh, actually, I was with Vodafone, but that was about 10 years ago. <laughs> now, why did you leave them? Um... I have no probably price. I think they started getting too expensive. Well, Vodafone. They were, they were very expensive at one point. Yeah. Vodafone. And then I actually, I remember I left them to go to Virgin because they like cut my bill into quarters. So. Yeah. So yeah. So Vodafone Australia is expected to report the loss of more than five hundred thousand customers from its network. Actually, now it's, it's probably a good time to jump back on because then there's <laughs> no towers in the air. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, five, they've lost more than 500,000 customers from its network over the 2011 calendar year as it prepares to report full financial year pro, uh, results. The losses come as Optus and Telstra reported mobile customer growth of 440,000 for Optus and 1.7 million for Telstra over the same period. Yeah, and you know the funny thing? I joined Telstra over a year ago, and in that 12 month period, they've got a 1.7 million customers. I have not had a degradation in my performance as a result of now more people on the network. Mm. I've Whereas had you go on Vodafone, probably a little bit of speed on data, but fucker no, off. Very little. Very, it's hardly noticeable. And, but, you know, whereas Vodafone, you get one extra person and the whole thing grinds mm. right <laughs> Vodafone has lost 60,000 registered customers over the quarter to December 31st. And British Vodafone CEO Vittorio Coelho, or whatever that is, said he was not Hello. very, said he wasn't very pleased with the result. Well, <laughs> Captain <laughs> Obvious, really? Yeah. <laughs> Captain Obvious. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> so, Voter fail. Yeah, that's right. Voter fail, all right. But yeah, so that's um, yeah, that's uh, that's my, I think that's all my uh, phone stories. Thank goodness. Well, while we're still talking, sort of internet related, um, <laughs> you know how a couple of weeks ago the FBI shut down uh, Mega Upload and a couple other sites. Well, on the day they shut down Mega Upload on the nineteenth of January, on the twentieth of January, the peer-to-peer -peer traffic went f it increased nine hundred percent. <laughs> so what what happened on the day they closed it down? So they shut down Mega Video, Mega Upload, you know, which was a streaming service primarily. Yeah, primarily. Yeah, yep. people went, oh well, I can't stream this anymore. I'll download it. <laughs> so streaming traffic dropped about um, ten percent, and peer to peer traffic increased nine hundred percent. Wow, <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> yes, that's right. Now. A spokesman for, uh, uh, I can't think of this, I can't find off the top of my head what website that was, but the, the um, company that was monitoring the traffic, the spokesman basically said, um, who didn't see this coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, well, you're not going to well, stop they it. Didn't. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're not going to stop it. They didn't see it coming, obviously. Well, the FBI didn't. The FBI, according no to the FBI, they were surprised that that happened and didn't expect that sort of reaction. Yeah. Right. Crazy stuff. Crazy <laughs> stuff. Um, well yeah, so, Eric, did you have any stories going on over there? Uh, balls up. 
<laughs> Balls, Zach. Wasn't he a musician? A ball. A ball. Three million dollar Parliament House <laughs> website is a year late. Oh, oh really? Really? Inefficiency in a Labor government? I don't believe it. Let's read on, shall we? Let's. What's the upgrade? The group are not get this. The group anonymous and complexity has been blamed. What? What so, the? Yeah. So the I, mate, yeah. Australia's Parliament House computer network partly contributed to a $600,000 cost blowout and a 12-month delay in constructing the newly designed Parliament web website, which is due to launch to the public this Friday evening. Really, let's wait and see, shall we? So, yeah, AP, aph.gov.au. Right. The figure and breach was revealed in Senate, Senate estimates yesterday by parliamentary librarian Roxanne Missingham and the president of the Senate, John Hogg. Both Labor, by the way. Hog so, and know, Ham. Hog. Boss Hog, <laughs> who reported that the total cost of the new aphgov.au site, which was meant to go live in February last year, had so far come to $3.1 million. I don't... Really? <laughs> you love it, Eric. Well, I, thought the, uh, love I thought the Queensland government was bad. They spent $850,000 on their website last night. Uh, last last year. night. Last <laughs> night. Yeah, they probably did spend it last <laughs> well, probably. night. Um, didn't like the designer, so they fired the designer. He kept the 850000 and they hired someone else. See, yeah, I they don't... had to start from scratch. What about the payroll system, Glenn, in the hospitals? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they've almost fixed that after six billion dollars or whatever it was. But it's still oh, this, it's still all wrong. Shambles. It's still all this wrong. This is why these people should be voted out. They I, yeah, so it's, it's not looking good for them. But um, yeah, it's crazy. But it is like th three point one million dollars for a website. Are you kidding me? So um, yeah, one website, and I guarantee you it's got one page in it with Ranger's face at the front front of it. Yeah, and, it's and they probably only work on IE six. And it's That's probably right. a, and it's probably only a static. <laughs> it's, page. It hasn't been. It's it's running on Netscape. <laughs> <laughs> Netscape Nav they built it on Netscape Navigator Gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's the that's the ant's pants. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just so yeah. bad. It's rubbish. Now look, we've got another another iOS uh, video from Garth this week, and uh, as always, now Garth is on a what's he on about this week? He's on about uh, App Switcher. Now it's not so much a review, um, not so much an app, but it's a um, I don't know what it what it, it's a way of doing things on the iPad and on the and oh something else I I learned through the week that I didn't know about on the iPad you know if you um if you if you sit did like a sideways um uh swipe <laughs> if you want to call it gesture yeah. gesture yeah so like you can zoom. yeah but yeah so you put your two fingers together and zoom yeah. out like outwards uh, while your keyboard's on the screen it splits the keyboard in two yeah, that's I, right I didn't know that and apparently where the keyboard is split in two, where the gap is, there's still ghost keys there. Yes. Yeah, so that's yeah. You learn something every day, don't you? Yeah. So anyway, Garth. Right. Put him on. I'll be back in a second. Garth's going to talk yeah. to us about uh, app switching. Hit it, Garthy boy. Here again with Garth, and he's got, a, he's got some tips this week, I believe. Garth, <laughs> how you doing? How you going, mate? Yeah, good, good. What's look, uh, going on? Yeah, what's going on? Look, I was, I was asking, look, I wonder what else I should do. I said, let's check in the app switcher and see what the most recently things are on your iPad, Glenn. Yes. And Glenn said to me, what's what, the app switcher? What is the app switcher? What is the app switcher? See, I knew when I bought the iPad, I got the email from Apple mm -hmm. saying, uh, come down and learn about your iPad, and I didn't. I you brushed didn't. them. All right, you brushed them. I brushed them, and now I'm paying the price. And this is where you are. This is where you find yourself. <laughs> That's exactly where I find <laughs> myself. <laughs> All righty, look, simple. App switcher is... Exactly what it sounds like. It lets you quickly switch between your apps. Okay. Nice. So on your iPhone or your iPad, same same deal. Um, on the iPad, you've got a pretty cool four-finger uh, swipe up. We'll bring it up. Or on both devices, double tap on your home button. We'll bring up your app switcher. And you'll see along the bottom there a list of your last, play, last used apps. Nice. It's a little bit like a taskbar in the Windows world. Um, it doesn't, though... If an app is in there, it doesn't mean it is necessar doesn't necessarily mean it is running in the background as such. Right. Um, it can be if it's a certain type of app, like uh, one that uses, um, say, it's downloading something in the background. So apps are allowed to continue to download stuff in the background. Um, a navigation app, you might be using your phone to navigate somewhere and off doing something else. Yep. The navigation will keep working in the background. So apps in the app switcher. Are just basically like a, a shortcut saves the state of the app 
So when you exit an app, saves the state of the app so that when you go back into it through the app switcher, you go back into the same place you were when you left the app. Oh, sweet as. Okay, so that's the way it's designed to work depending on the app as to how well that's implemented. Yep. And, you know, um, as I said, some... It's good... I guess you could say good iOS hygiene to every now and again go in there and clear out your app switcher. How do you clear clear it out? What does that mean? Okay, so if you want to bring up an app, bring up your app switcher, so your four fingers swipe up. Yep. Um, Like so. Oh, the screen we dimmed out. Anyway, same way you delete an app on your home screen, you you know, you press and hold it, or for for those of us using voiceover, you double tap and hold, but press and hold and you see the little wobbly thing. Yep. So you do that while it's in the app switcher. Oh, yes, yes. And you can just delete away to your little heart's content. Oh, I see what's going on. That'll take everything out of your app switcher. Right. Um, And if you then do a a restart, like pressing your home button and your lock button together until it powers off, it's like a cold cold reboot, basically. Right. That'll make sure if there's any little gremlins in the background eating up your battery and your processor cycles... Kill them oh. all off. Does this work on the iPhone as well? Works on your iPhone as well. How did you say, sorry, just quickly again, so I don't have to go back and listen to myself again? <laughs> no one would want to do that. No, no. <laughs> how, how, did you, how did you clear your, your, your app switcher? Okay, so just go through. So press and hold on an app so you get it to the right. bubble. Yep. Um, and then just tap it away, delete okay. them off, delete them off, delete them off. That'll so be- once it's empty, yep. um, that pretty much has cleared your app switcher. That's done. There's one next step you can take, um, and you can do this at any point that you're having a problem with your phone. Yep. So it's running slow for something, the battery's running down, and you're not sure why. It could be some little process that some app developer hasn't nailed down just right, yep. running in the background. Press and hold your home button with your lock screen, lock, bu- lock button. Yep. Um, normally you'll get to a point where it says slide to power off. Keep holding it at that point. Just keep going for your full 10 seconds and it will reboot the phone. Nice. So doing those two things together, every now and then, really good for your, your phone. Oh, yeah. In terms of just in case there is something in the background. Well, I've um, never done it and my app switcher ha- must have every app that I've ever looked at. Pretty much. And, you know, that's testament to say that those apps aren't all running in the background. Otherwise, your phone would be... Well, your iPad would be just... Yeah, stuff. So, yeah, they're just like shortcuts, like a save state for that app. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Cool. I'm going to I'm gonna. But it's um, yeah, that. handy little handy little thing if you haven't used it before. All right, good stuff. Thanks for that tip, uh, Garth. And I think uh, next, next time we're going to go back to an app. Let's cool. do it. All right. See you again. Yeah, thanks, Garth. He's, uh, he loves his little app switcher there. And he's done a, a massive, a massive write-up uh, for that, that little tip. And you can find the massive write-up on the, on the aussietechheads.com.au webpage. Just go under, at the moment, it's listed under the show and then iOS reviews by Garth. And you can uh, just watch that video. And don't again. forget, too, you can do the same thing on Android by holding down your home button. brings up the list of all your currently running apps. Oh, can you, Joe? Let's see, I've learned two things today. <laughs> is that another four finger swipe? No, just yeah, pretty much. Just hold down your home button; it'll bring up, it'll pop up a list of apps. Um, oh yeah, and also yeah, you yeah. can oh, yeah, yeah. pinch yeah. and zoom in on your home page, and it will bring up your four or five desktops. Oh, oh, that's how it goes. Eh? How do you take a photo of the screen on the on the Android? Um, install the screen <laughs> capture program. No, oh, it's not as easy like the <laughs> iPhone. Yeah. Nice Unless you've got, well, it depends. If you've got your, I think your phone does HDMI out, so you can do it that way. It just depends on your phone if it's got an output or not. Right, okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So nice I, and simple, Glenn. Nice and simple. Yeah, that's right. Keep it, keeping it simple all the way. Now, uh, Eric, we're going to go from the iOS to, to Audible. Now, audible.com uh, forward slash Aussie. Tech, audibletrial.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads or just go to the webpage aussietechheads.com.au click on the link the, the Audible ad just about on every page there join it up uh, 14 days uh, get a free book free credit and download it and keep it and keep it and play it and play it and play it until you get sick of it and or you can or you can stay you got, you got the audio file that I sent you Glenny I have got the audio file now what are we listening to what are you reviewing this week we here? are listening to Helter Skelter the true story of the Manson murders I thought I'd Add a little bit of uh, mayhem. All right, so let's listen to the little excerpt of um, 
of this one here from what what happened here? Audible. Read by Vincent uh, Buglosier and Kurt Gentry. That's the book and narrated by Scott Brick. All right. It was so quiet, one of the killers would later say, you could almost hear the sound of ice rattling in cocktail shakers in the homes way down the canyon. The canyons above Hollywood and Beverly Hills play tricks with sounds. A noise clearly audible a mile away may be indistinguishable at a few hundred feet. It was hot that night, but not as hot as the night before when the temperature hadn't dropped below 92 degrees. The three-day heat wave had begun to break a couple of hours before, about 10 p.m. on Friday. To the psychological, as well as the physical relief of those Angelinos who recalled that on such a night just four years ago, Watts had exploded in violence. Though the coastal fog was now rolling in from the Pacific Ocean, Los Angeles itself remained hot and muggy, sweltering in its own emissions. But here, high above most of the city, and usually even above the smog, it was at least ten degrees cooler. Still, it remained warm enough so that many residents of the area slept with their windows open in hopes of catching a vagrant breeze. All things considered, it's surprising that more people didn't hear something. Oh, that sounds very uh, menacing. And just, just oh yeah, <laughs> twenty six hours that book goes oh, for. Great, and twenty six uh, hours. And just in case you couldn't read who it was by, uh, because the screen is a bit blurry, that is Kurt Gentry. Just uh, if you couldn't read that, while the get mixed up with other words. Okay, now um, yeah, so you can uh, download. Is that one you can probably download that one for. For cheap or for free, whatever. You, uh, that would be that. That would be a free credit, I would imagine. Yeah. So AussieTechHeads.com. That you get link on the uh, on the Audible link there and uh, join up for free. And uh, yeah, do us all a favour and stay stay joined up. And you get uh, one book a month, Eric, for about how much is it a month? Uh, depends what plan you join on. I think it's about fourteen ninety five a month or something like that, and you get one free book a month. And you also get discounts for being a member on discounts other discounts for and, other books. That's right. Yeah. So that's good stuff. Good stuff. All right, moving on, moving on. Uh, Woolworths, uh, we mentioned, I mentioned a Woolworths app oh, ages ago on the show, and you can download the little Woolies app to your Android and iPhone, and you can do your shopping list and do all the, all, the, all the good stuff. Now, they've improved it. They've actually improved it, so they've completed an integration of the online shopping system to its mobile app, and it now allows you to purchase supermarket items directly from your phone to be home delivered. So Beautiful. That's Pretty good, pretty good. I bet, now, I bet you they haven't lowered their prices. I don't know. They're not too bad. They're probably lower than Coles overall, aren't they? Oh, I think they're about the same. Mm, probably. Uh, their yeah. fruit and veg is rubbish, though. Yeah, Woolworths customers, uh, as I said, could already do their, their, their like ticking and list online, but now you can actually buy it online. Now, apparently, uh, the delivery is minimum spending 30 bucks, and the delivery, the most you'll pay for the pay for delivery is $13. So it's not too bad. That's a good option, I reckon, like... I reckon if I didn't have my wife to go and do the shopping, I'd be doing that. <laughs> Window, uh, Woolworths is considering a Windows Phone app as well as its third option in the in the future. So there you go. Oh well, that that one person that buys from Woolies will be able to use it. Yeah, one person who owns the Windows Phone. Oh look, Woolworths. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It might be a different story down there, but like, up here we've got Woolworths and Coles like directly opposite each other in the always yeah in always, the same yeah. mall of the, in the shopping same mall yeah in the uh, pretty in the, much yep. Yeah. And uh, Woolworths is always full, and Coles is always empty. So it's like if you just want a bottle of milk or something mm-hmm. like that, you're always just ducking the Coles because it's empty. I don't know what's yeah, going on, yeah. but um, Woolies is always the aisles. The aisles are wider in Coles, which I like. Yeah, but... true, true. Um, but in my experience and in my wife's experience, that the fruit and veg in both of them is freaking disgraceful. Mm. Well, we're lucky we've got a fruito out the front of the shop. Yeah, well, that's she doesn't buy her fruit that and veg. Pretty good. We actually get our fruit and veggies delivered. Yeah, by where? By Coles? No, not by Coles, by um, Aussie Farmers Direct. Oh, yes, yes. That, that's supposed to be pretty good, I've heard. Um, yeah, not bad. Yeah, Aldi's not too bad, Will. Do they home deliver? Oh, Will's gone off the air. There he is. No, but you can uh, order online. I don't know yeah, if there's an Audi app sure, as well. No, you can order online. There's an Audi app, and you can punch in, uh, like, you know, you get your, your... Yeah, there's an Audi app. It works quite well. Yeah, you get your catalogue, and uh, you can punch in what you're looking for, and it'll send you a reminder when the yeah. when the thing goes on sale. No, that's not bad. 
Good idea. Yeah, it's, that's not too bad. We've got a few Audis. Remember, remember they used to sell netbooks at Aldi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they still sell computers. and. Oh, yeah, they, they still, still do, do, do they? The median. That's yeah, right, median. yeah. You can get PCs, laptops. Oh, well, that's probably the last yeah, place I'd get to buy a laptop, but never mind. No, they're pretty good, actually. A friend of mine bought one, and it's it's actually a really, really high-quality build. Like, he's, it's, uh, I mean, they come with a three-year replacement warranty. You take it in after three years, and if whatever they have... What do you take it into, the, the, the checkout Audi. chick? No, you take it to Audi. <laughs> they give you the details of the, the supplier. Yeah. Um, for the first 12 months, you can take it into the store. And they'll just replace it with whatever is the current equivalent. And after that, after the next two years, you just send it back to the supplier and they'll just send you the newest version of whatever that laptop is. Yeah, so How that's not good. They? How, what? Hey? How ugly are they? Um, they look like Toshiba's, pretty much. Pretty Cross ugly. Cross between Toshiba and Adele. But you get desktops for about, what, 500 bucks or something like that? For, for yeah, even, yeah, well, that's it. You can get a, a fully a full desktop with, uh, you know, 21-inch LCD for 599 you know. Hmm. Is, hmm. It, is it on their website that, that where they, you know, where, what sort of computers they've got? Or is that you've got to go into the store and get oh, it? Only when they've got them. Oh, okay. They have specials yeah. every now and again. Catalog specials. Right. Like- every three, month, three or four months they roll through. Okay. Yeah, it's like every every week they've got something different in the store. Uh, yeah. and, and, it, and that same product probably might not come through for another four, three or four months, as Will said. But it's, um, look, they're not too bad. Look, I'm not, I'm not sure about their fruit and veg. I'd rather go to the green grocer. But, uh, Absolutely. But, but, other, oh, yeah. but everything else, like, like sauces and stuff like that, I find that they're, they're, just, they're nicer. I don't know why, but there's a lot of stuff uh, that is just nicer than the, than the other things. Oh, but, actually, if you go to Woolies, get, go down... Um, They've got a well. There's a lot of South Africans near where I live, right? Heaps of them, and they've got a and, and a lot of Jews as well. And uh, in the in Woolies, up uh, at St Ives up here, they've got a kosher aisle. In Woolies, and next and then next to that is a South African aisle because a lot of South Africans are Jewish as well. But there's a, they've got this beautiful sauce from from South Africa called Mrs Balls, right. steak sauce. I tell you, it is bloody beautiful. It's like a chutney. Oh, nice, nice. It's beautiful. Spicy. Go and get it. And only Woolies, only Woolies stock it, apparently, yeah, okay. from, from what I know. Is it, spi- is it spicy? No, it's not spicy. Hmm. Not spicy. It's like a cross between a chutney that's not spicy and barbecue sauce, you know. It's quite yeah. my mate makes nice. it, My mate, is, is, his name's Balls. His nickname's Balls. And he uh, he makes a nice spicy sauce and he puts his own labels God. on his bottles. He put Mr. Balls. He got, no, he just calls it Balls. You'll need them. <laughs> It's <laughs> a, a nice hot sauce too. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, I don't like them too hot. Oh yeah, hotter the better. You know? Hotter the better. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, love it. Does a really nice chutney, and then he does he does a normal one, which is warm. That's that's certainly nice. And then he does the same chutney, but he uses uh, bird's eye chilies. Now um, that's good. Will now moving on. And Sorry, to it's catch really you. hot. Yeah, oh, hot stuff is great. I, I remember having just a hot pizza one night, and uh, I just ate it all, and it just burnt my mouth out for like <laughs> well done. for three hours. But anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on. Now, Will, what can you tell me about the .dot info domains? Anything exciting, or no comment, or what? Uh, Do you like them? What about them? What oh yes. Yeah. Oh no. I, did you Did you have any uh, any comments at all? Because the Department of Parliamentary Services has blocked access by Australia's parliamentarians. Uh, to yeah. some 5.2 million websites with a .info domain. So senators mm. are unable to opt out of the block on .info domain. So you're not allowed to block uh, opt out. Um, so apparently, yeah. yeah, this advice was that the domain is generally considered to be a source of more than its fair share of attacks and malicious software. The department... But is that true? No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> no, I didn't think so because lots of people got .info as a business domain. Yeah. And legitimate businesses. And so, you know, this is, once again, bureaucrats who don't know what they're doing. What a, what a, what a surprise. There's a statistic somewhere I'm actually trying to find. I don't know if Glenn may have it on his story there. No, but I don't have any there's, stats. There's actually a statistic that st- stated something like one in, I think it was one in a thousand, thousand for example, dot .infos was a malicious domain. And one in 15 dot .coms was a malicious Yeah, exactly. Domain. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> There are more dot com domains that are malicious because they're the most common ones. But why yeah, they're easier to hack or dot C H or why are they picking on dot info? 
Because they Stop can. picking on me. <laughs> because most of the dot .info sites are charity, not-for-profit, um, you know, actually in, in, inf- informative sites that they might actually learn something. Yeah, right. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. The government well, doesn't want us to learn Obviously, anything. the p- parliamentarians aren't visiting those sites anyway because they're not learning anything. So mm. That's why they, well, so they blocked them. That's yeah. why. That's yeah. why. No, no, opt out. Don't worry about it. We never go there anyway. And uh, which, which reminds me and probably... Um, uh, <laughs> which just reminds me, unfortunately, I suppose. But before before the show, each Thursday night, uh, Tech Webcast goes out at 7 o'clock, replay of the previous show that they record. You can go and find Tech Webcast at techwebcast.info. But you unless you work for the government. <laughs> unless you work yeah, for the government. Right. Sorry, Brad. And, uh, don't worry, Stephen Conroy won't be watching that show. <laughs> no, he won't watch, Brad. So it's maybe get another another domain. All right, Hope now. you're watching this show, Steve-O. Steve-O, the diddly-o. Now, Twitter has struck a deal with... <laughs> with uh, two satellite operators to give subscribers the ability to publish in most remote locations in Australia and around the world. Uh, customers signed up under Telstra's Iridium and Optus's Thuraya, if, I, if, that's, if that's pronounced properly, T-H-U. Thuraya, that's a, yeah, Thuraya. It's a Singaporean mm. All right, word. Twitter suggests it could be an ideal way to keep people informed f- from war zones or in a natural disaster where networks may not be available. So that's all right. Yep, good idea. Good idea. Good idea. So, so you can do that. Now, I've got another one here talking about uh, all that sort of stuff. Now, I think Eric's got an iPad or an Apple story as well. But Apple faces calls for ban on iPad shipments in China. I don't know if any if you guys picked this one up through the week. Um, Have you got the updated one for that? Oh, I don't no, know. I well, let, I'll, I'll tell you what I've got, and then you tell yep. me what the update is. Uh, Chinese technology company ProView said Tuesday it is seeking to ban shipments of, Austra- of Apple's iPads in and out of the country, alleging it owns the trademark rights to iPad in China. Now, Apple Good luck with that. Well, Apple bought the rights to the iPad name from the Taiwanese company affiliated with ProView called ProView Taipei in 2009. But ProView claims it still maintains ownership of the brand in mainland China. A Chinese court rejected Apple's claim in, uh, to the name in December and awarded ProView continued ownership in the country. Apple's obviously appealing. Apple claims it bought the worldwide rights to the iPad name in 10 countries several years ago, and that ProView is simply neglecting to respect this agreement in mainland China. Update, Will. Okay, go on. Will, updates. Um, I was going to say, basically, that's pretty much irrelevant now anyway, because the Chinese government has come out and said that we are not going to ban the iPad sales in China, regardless of who owes them. And uh, if you refuse to sell iPads in China, we'll just bring them in anyway. Right. (laughs) So, basically, they're coming into China, regardless of whether Apple wants them to or not. Right. Well, you know, the, the Chinese, well, if they want something, not, they'll bring it in. Let's face it, though. They're yeah, not they'll really... Um, open the back know. door of the factory and load something to the truck. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's, it's, it was... it was um, They lost the case in December. And, and then Apple's claiming here that they're neglecting to respect this agreement. Well, what's the agreement say? And if it does say we've got the worldwide rights, then why, how do they lose the case in December? So someone's telling porkies here... Yeah, look. Although the Chinese are telling porkies, and they've 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 said you lose in December when they shouldn't have lost, or Apple doesn't have an agreement. But does China actually give two craps about copyright anyway? No. Well, no. <laughs> not, well, they don't give two rights of copyright that belong to other people. Mm, yeah. But if it was their copyright, which this seems to be, yeah, pro view, suddenly yeah. they care. For what reason yeah, I don't um, know. Pro view is just about bankrupt. So um, that, that's what they're, they're. That's why they're doing it. Well, they'll just they'll just bury them in um, bury them in paperwork, and they'll you know they'll get yeah. they'll get it for cheap anyway. Now you had an, an Apple story, Eric. I I've believe. got a couple, but I'll start with speaking of bankrupt. I'll start with this. Apple is suing Kodak for patent infringement, <laughs> and um, even though Kodak has has uh, filed for Chapter Eleven. Yeah, they're just about dead anyway. More ugly news for Eastman Kodak in a month filled with it. In a, in a month filled with it, after filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and shuttering its digital camera business, the com- company now finds itself in Apple's crosshairs. Apple late Tuesday asked a U.S. bankruptcy court in New York for permission to sue the photography pioneer for allegedly infringing patents related to technologies used in printers, digital cameras, and digital picture frames. 
So there you go. Well, what what what? But didn't Kodak develop the digital picture frame? I think they had the first one ever on the market. So obviously, well, they, no model had the first one in to the market. But Apple's claiming that they used their technology to bring it to market. Do you who, think? Who that, knows whether that's true or not? Now Apple's obviously not after money. Do you think that Apple's no. is plan is to maybe to just try and just cripple Kodak, bash them over the head with just legal fees and paperwork, as mentioned before with ProView, just 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 smash them and then go. I well, think it goes beyond that. I think it's deeper than that. But and I then think they, but those guys, Apple, Motorola, Google, Samsung, Nokia, it's all about patents. Yeah, but what they this is what what Apple's hoping for here. I think is it's a defensive move. They're just thinking they they want to they want to file an infringement notice just in case because yeah because they just in case these pay, this company goes broke the only thing that they can pay with are patents that's right these patents yeah. are going to go up for grabs right yeah, that's and right. someone might buy the patents and then sue Apple and so this is a defensive move for Apple right. to get a hold of these patents before someone else does yeah. just yeah. in case there is something in there that they can sue Apple with mm. Apple would rather get their gr their grubby mitts on it first yes. <laughs> I mean. Uh, speaking, you know, Apple's suing everybody now. They're suing Google to ban the new Galaxy Nexus. And so they yeah. should. They've got $100 you know. billion in the bank. They don't know what to do with it. That's not the point. That's yeah. not the issue. No, Apple just needs to be told that, you, don't you know, they don't own it. all these patents. The, the problem is they're suing on false grounds. They're suing for patents they don't own and don't have any right over, and they're suing for oh. technology issues that they're making up. Well, they're so, not making it up, Will. These these lawyers that they pay, you know, their legal bills are over $100 million a year. These guys are the smartest of the smart. They're not making this shit up. They are. They're not making because it up. Because they're claiming that they own these patents and they don't they do. own them. They've got they them. Know. They don't. They put in, yeah. The court doesn't allow them to file a claim unless they show them evidence that there is a claim. They just can't send them a letter and say, we're suing you. Everyone goes, oh, okay. The court they do because well, they, put, your they, evidence. Put the, they put the sales bans on products and then it takes that long for people to figure out whether or not... Well, the sales ban only goes on the product if the judge agrees to it. And the judge will only agree to it if he says, well, you've got a case because I've got the patent here in front of me. And yes, that product does infringe on that patent. Let's go to court or let's go to settlement or let's let's put an injunction in. The judge is not going to award and allow a case to go ahead unless there's evidence. Hmm. Well, not, it's not, you know, not, not like the tax office where you're guilty until proven innocent. No, no. Well, well, I think uh, that, that's overheated Will's machine, <laughs> that discussion, and, he, and he's chopped off. <laughs> so I think he's, uh, his media centre might, uh, might have blown up into his computer. But um, I'm sure he will, will, will be back in a minute. He, he will reconnect in a second. All right. So um, now just moving on, while we're just talking about Apple, have you finished your Apple stories, Eric? But for now, yes. Okay, for now. <laughs> Okay, so my, uh, my my next one is Steve Jobs. He might be gone, but he's not forgotten. Now, I don't know if um, if you guys come across this one or not either. But, uh, oh, hi, Will. There's a surprise. <laughs> we talk about Apple and my internet drops, drops out. Yeah, I thought, yeah they knew. They knew. Apple's, <laughs> Apple's got the patent over uh, Optus technology. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, so, well, we moved on. Did you, did you want to have any lasting... Comments on that story, Will? Saying that you dropped out? Oh, uh, no, not really. Nothing important. Not on that story. It's only Apple. All right. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Apple is now worth more than Google and Microsoft put together. And I see five hundred dollars a share. And it's bigger than Sweden. Wow. And five hundred bucks a share. Uh, yeah, well, they're worth half a trillion dollars. Yeah, that's that's insane. Well, the U.S. economy. No wonder it's gone to shit. Yeah, it's all in Apple's pockets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all in Apple. But anyway, uh, the FBI knows all about it anyway because uh, Steve Jobs' FBI files uh, have yeah, been released yeah, under the Freedom of Information. So they are showing a man who commanded respect uh, as an innovator but was questioned on his honesty and morality. The file was prepared uh, on the on Steve Jobs as, as he was considered for a presidential appointment back in 1991 during George... H. W. Bush's time in office. Documents yeah, also man. Doc, documents also reveal that Jobs had been the victim of an extortive bomb threat in 1985, and his his Jobs file Nate to his conversion to com, uh, Buddhism and admissions of drug use. Now the uh, web page for the FBI site 
And it's very, it's a, I don't know, you go and have a look at it, it's a scrappy looking site. Not the site. Oh, but, FBI, yes, yeah, not, not good. But look at the paperwork. Like, here's the paperwork. Yeah, it's just all handwritten, just, you know, <laughs> just stuff. If you want to see any of these links uh, on the show that we talk about, it's all in the show notes on aussietechheads.com.au. You just go to, onto the webpage under show notes. My show notes are there with links in them. And you can see this link if you're interested in looking at an FBI file on, um, on Jobsy. But it's quite extensive. Like it's, um, it's, all, it's just a file. You'd think it'd be like a real nicely typed up book. But I suppose if you want that, you've got to go and buy no, the because they're always adding to it. That's why. Yeah. They add to yeah. it. So yep. it's not, not on like a notebook, like in classroom where you write in order. Yeah. It's every time you find something, you bang it in there. But look at it. See, back in 1991 there, you can see uh, for those on the video, it, the type, it's actually typewritten by the look of it with a typewriter. Yep. It's yeah, actually typewritten. Sure. And then let's, let's see if we can bring the, we'll scroll down, see if we can scroll down to something more current. Let's see if it, let's see if uh, FBI technology. Still typewritten. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, it's, laughs> still typewritten. Oh, maybe they've got daisy chains. Daisy chain printer, but anyway. Uh, now it's handwritten. Once they hit the modern era, they went to handwriting. Oh, yeah. what's that? Is that a picture of his bald head or something? But anyway, go and have a look at that. Uh, there's a link in the show notes, but if you can't find the show notes, I will attempt to give this a go. But it's vault.fbi.gov forward slash Steve hyphen jobs forward slash Steve hyphen jobs hyphen part hyphen zero oh, one, forget hyphen it. Off. just type in the google steve jobs <laughs> fbi file yeah that's, find a, it. that's a better way that's a better way yeah go and do that all right now uh what else have we got going here we've got another email got yeah sorry well uh oh, okay. er, yep who was that eric i was gonna say no. i've got a couple of oh. couple of quick stories here yep. um first of all microsoft in their most recent update to the uh security essentials which generally isn't too bad it's their, their version of a, of a sort of a, you know, virus scan, a system protection thing. Um, Microsoft accidentally flagged Google.com as a malicious site. Well done. <laughs> oh, accidentally my ass. <laughs> um, which falsely identified the search engine as being infected by the black hole exploit kit. Um, can you imagine now every person in just about every business around the world on the phone to their system administrator going, why is Google a virus? <laughs> yeah, well done, Microsoft. Because yeah. everyone, at, everyone at Bing is laughing their heads off. <laughs> Damn. Um, thousands of national Australian bank customers, in case you're still actually with them for some reason, oh, were yeah. prevented from withdrawing their money when a computer glitch crippled the network from 1 p.m. Um, uh, it was a couple of days ago. Um, basically, their entire system went down and you could not withdraw money online. You couldn't use FPOS, you couldn't use ATMs, nothing. Bet yeah, you right. I bet you they, were, they could take money out of your account, though. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. They had no problems at all with bank-to-bank with mm. -bank transfers. Yeah, yeah. I bet. <laughs> uh, apparently, you couldn't even go over the counter and do it because the, all the systems oh, over the counter were broken as well. Mm. That is so uh, backward. Basically, yeah. So, but what bank so isn't over well. here? Everyone's had a go at going down. <laughs> like Commonwealth, ANZ, um, the, you know, everyone. Yeah. All the banks have gone down. Most of the uh, building societies have been pretty stable. Well, yeah. they're not spending any of their money on the on the upgrades, are they? No, they're too busy paying idiots. their uh, executives. Yeah. Nice. Idiots. Um, a US man was trying to give up smoking, so he purchased some of the uh, electric cigarettes oh, that yeah. you use. That, oh, that yeah. Shocker. Thing. <laughs> a faulty battery caused an electric cigarette to explode in the man's mouth in the US, taking out some of his front teeth, a chunk of his tongue, and severely burning his face. Won't be burn he won't be smoking now. <laughs> you need a um, pipe. Tom Holloway, 57, was trying to quit smoking when he puffed up on the device when it blew up in his face. Jeez. Um, <laughs> so, have to yeah. Have to give Mark a shout-out. How you going, Mark? Hope you're off those for that. <laughs> Off those ones. <laughs> I hope you're off those e-cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before they blow up in your face. <laughs> uh, the best analogy is like when, tr was, like he was trying to hold a bottle rocket in his mouth when it went off. Mm. So there you go. The battery flew out of the device and set the closet on fire. Oh, was he in the closet? <laughs> God, no. Or, or he flew was he across the room <laughs> and set the closet on fire? Jeez. Oh, wow. <laughs> just as just as well he wasn't on the job. You know, <laughs> you oh, good God! Who smokes on the job, dude? 
I don't know what sort of uh, what sort of habits you've got. My boss still does. Um, <laughs> All right. And the one thing that uh, I'm really, really interested in, and I can't wait till the end of the month for it to come out, is the Raspberry Pi. Um, oh. If you just Google Raspberry, R A S P B E W R Y P I, so Raspberry Pi, um, it's basically a $25 fully embedded computer that runs Linux. Can, um, I, can I install Skype on it and stream? Yep. And it's powerful enough to, it's powerful enough to run Skype. It's powerful enough to run a HD video cam. And it's powerful enough to stream um, and to watch um, 1080p video. So you embed it where? Um, it's just a little all-in-one. If you go to raspberrypi.org... We'll um, yeah, I'll have a look at it after the show. You'll, you'll right. see, but basically it's it's all on one little, basically like a project board right. um, that you, you use to build model kits. It's oh, basically yeah? got oh, right, nice. uh, a HDMI port, USB port, SD port. Um, it's got built-on memory. It's got an ARM processor. It's got a, I think it's got two USB ports, a network port, um, and a AV out and a sound out. And then it's got options you can add... Um, Wi-Fi capability via the USB, and you can add a few other bits and pieces. So, I really can't wait for that to come out. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think um, this is the web page. Can I hook up a screen onto it? Yep, it's got HDMI output. Okay. Is there any pictures? So, it's got HDMI and it's got AV. Esada. So. Hey, sorry. where's the pictures? Esada. Um. Yes, actually, no. It does. Yes, it does have an eSATA port on the board. Okay. Yeah, it's got two actually. That might two. be it there. Is that it there? I can't That's see it. a picture of it. That's it right there. And what what's the what's the size of the pro, what's the speed of the processor? Uh, it's an ARM processor. Uh, right. Um, but oh. equivalent to what? I five, I three. Tell you in a sec. Oh, where'd it go? I just lost the page. It does actually say. But it's it's well it's going to be relatively powerful because it plays 1080p video. So um, yeah, so nice. Yeah. yeah, look there it is. There's a the computer down there. Not a good picture, but yeah, all right. Let's have, and how much? Twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars for the the basic model and thirty five dollars for the the model B, which uh, has a little bit more onboard memory, the a little bit more video memory. The Raspberry Pi is a $25 computer that is powerful enough to run Quake 3, a very intense 3D video game. It plugs straight into a TV with HDMI output and is designed to be cheap enough for anyone can buy. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We spoke to you, blah, blah, blah. So that's just off that page there. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, good stuff. All what right. RAM? How much RAM can it fit on it? Oh, geez. doesn't um, say that. RAM's embedded. And I think oh, okay. that's the difference in the price. I think, off the, don't quote me, off the top of my head, it's 512 meg for the $25 one and a gig for the $35 one. Uh, here we go. The Model A, I oh, know, sorry, they're not that high. The Model A has 128 meg of RAM, one USB port, and no Ethernet. The Model B has 256 meg of RAM, two USB ports, and Ethernet. Now, the memory is upgradable in terms of like putting an SD card in and using that as like turbo cache. So, yeah, right. It's and where it's you... a ARM 1176 uh, for 700 megahertz processor, four core processor Jeez. with a dedicated GPU capable of playing black Blu ray at H.264, 40 megabits a second. Wow. And what you just buy it from the side, I guess? You could, yep. you know, you could, you could build a media box out of this yeah. thing. That's what I'm going Basically. to do with it. Yeah, nice. Um, they reckon real world, well, real world processing performance is probably only equivalent to um, like a 300 meg P2 in terms of the actual processor. But because it's got better video, faster memory, all that sort of stuff, so it'll actually, it's actually quicker than that. Yeah, because right. Because there's no way a 300 megahertz P2 will run HD video, so. Yeah, nice, nice work, Will. Good find. Good work. All right, so um, so let's get let's start wrapping up the show. Let's go. I've got another couple of emails. Uh, one is yep. just a an email to, from Dave. Hi, Dave. He's just saying he, he loves the show. He's actually listened to the show since back to episode forty seven. Wow, that's a long time ago, isn't it? So good, good on you, Dave. Yeah, good on you, Dave. Uh, he, this is his uh, long time listener, first time emailer. 
He just wanted to say thanks for the info on the iPod replacement program. I think we covered that a little uh, while a ago. Few shows back, yeah. Yep. He dug up his uh, old iPod, sent it back, and got a brand new one. iPod Nano. I still haven't done that. Yeah, I've I, got. Uh, I've got. Uh, we've got two here. Yeah, why don't you do it? Hmm. I don't know. It's, I couldn't be bothered. What am I going to do with it? I don't use it anyway. Yeah, send them up. Okay, I'll give them to the kids. <laughs> you want to do it, though, if you got them. All right. And another one from... Oh, geez, I didn't... I'm sorry, I didn't put your name in here. But, uh... You've got an iPad lying around doing nothing. I'll take it. I need one to do some testing with. An iPad? iPad. I'm not going to give you an iPad. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just thought I'd try my luck. I'll send you a first generation iPad for three thousand dollars though. <laughs> are you say are they how gonna does... Yeah go? I was gonna say how does no sound? <laughs> so is that a no will? <laughs> hey, I'm just just uh talk amongst yourselves, I'm just trying to find this uh not this last email. I don't know what I've done with right. it. Well so. iPad three should be coming out next month between March and June anyway, so I'll see what that what it, what that <laughs> ends up looking like. All right, so yeah, this one, here we go. From Mike, so uh, hi Glenn, love your podcast. Last week I mentioned that you c- that I c- that well, I'll read as it reads. <laughs> <laughs> Start again. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, yeah, so yeah, love your show. Last week you mentioned that you can stream video from your home media center to be viewed on your iPad, just like the Slingbox technology available overseas. I uh, would yep. really like to get more details about your setup and the hardware that you're using. Uh, cheers for now. So I use uh, Air Video. Uh, you can download the app from the iTunes App Store. And there's also, when you go to the webpage, I think there's a little bit of software that you can download onto your Mac or your PC. And, it, and it's, it's good. It will transcode on the fly. So, like, obviously, if you're 3G, uh, you don't, you're not gonna, you don't want to be sending a, a, a full DVD across the, across the 3G little airwaves. They get all choked up. So what it does, on the fly, as you're playing it, it will transcode it down to a lower uh, bit rate and send that. So save you on your, all your bandwidth and so forth. So that's one I use, Air Video. There's others around. But, uh, look, if you don't like that one, Send me another email. I'll tell you what else that that I that I have used. I think I've only got another one. I think Subsonic yeah, is it, another one for if audio. If you've got, if you're just going to do it at home within a room, room to room, you can iTunes will do that. But if you want to be out of your house, um, then what Glenn's suggesting is probably the best option. Yeah, so, or, a, or a sling box. Yeah, so have a have a look at that one. And look, the only thing I could probably say, maybe uh, say is yeah look it was quite easy from memory it just all went it just all worked it was it was pretty easy it was pretty easy uh, you might have a bit of trouble the only thing I think you might have trouble with is is uh, streaming what you've maybe just recorded if you're recording TV onto your media center but uh, anything but the TV that you record will just go sweet as but they you might just have to have another little plug in or whatever for the what is it the so you just need a good internet connection right yeah basically oh it doesn't matter it just streams over 3g yeah whatever whatever you, whatever you got going a uh, little ADSL probably do. All right, so um, have a look at that one. So thanks to those guys that emailed in tonight or this week and, and whatever. That was really good. And we want some more emails, please, or more emails, video questions, audio questions, whatever. Uh, there's a, The web page is starting to open up more and more every week. I, I've uh, put up there now how to how to be part of the show, you know, Skype, Aussie Tech Heads, and chuck your video up on YouTube, ask us questions, and it's a link and all this sort of stuff. So do all that sort of stuff. But that's the end of the show. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Will. You're welcome, sir. And, no uh, worries. Thank you. And don't forget, if, you wanna, if you've got a Samsung Galaxy S or any other Android phone and you want to mod it uh, to get rid of the proprietary software that, that might have come with it, uh, just the, what do we use? Cyanogen mod. So just go to uh, the, I don't know, Will's site, TBT, talkbacktech.com. Is that it? That's it. Yeah, talkbacktech.com. You'll see the video. I'm going to put an abridged version up on the Aussie Tech Eds YouTube as well. I'm going to. <laughs> Will, that, that took two hours to record. Well, I edited it down to an hour, but I'm going to edit it down even more <laughs> and uh, just put the actual the actual uh, workings of it all up for you. So it's just nice and straight in. All That'll right. That'll go down to about probably what 35 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that. Yeah, 35 minutes. About something, that. something like that. Yeah, yeah that's right. All right, so until next week, we can contact Eric, Will, or Glenn at Eric, Will, or Glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. Don't forget the webpage. Don't forget Audible if you're into Audible books and all that sort of stuff. If you're not, we'll get started, get cracking, get into them. And we want to thank you, the listeners, for every week downloading and listening to us and watching us live in the lounge. Thanks, guys, in the lounge. Quite a turnout tonight. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you all next week. So until then, it's good night from us. Bye-bye. See you, guys. Night, guys.